Welcome to episode 11 of Tim Talk, the podcast about the DC animated universe co-created by Bruce Tim. I'm Chris Lord. I'm Cameron Dexter. And today we're talking Feet of Clay. So yeah. first episode of Clayface, pretty solid shit this yeah. time around. So they rewrote him for the show, correct? Uh, yeah, so he... Like a little bit? They did, yeah. So he's kind of a, a combination of the original Clayface, mm-hmm. Basil Carlo, who is a failed actor, and then the second Clayface, Matt Hagen, who had like this transformational powers. But yeah, so kind of like they did with Mr. Freeze, too, they they kind of took pieces they wanted and created a new, more sympathetic backstory. And mm-hmm. I'd say it works. Yeah, this th- I think this ranks up there with, you know, Heart of Ice and uh, Two-Face. Yeah. This, I, I loved this these two episodes and you know i think we're we've had so many comic book origins now mostly through movies we're kind of tired of it Mm -hmm. but like credit to these guys when they sit down to do their villain origins like they do a really nice job with them like they really flesh out the characters they make them sympathetic Mm -hmm. like they do a better job than i mean most of the movies are yeah at this point well you know what the watching these two episodes you know what it reminded me most of Mm. was spider-man 3 the origin of sandman oh especially the fight scenes that we'll go into in a bit yeah um i sam raimi directed that one right he did he directed all three of them okay yeah. um he pulled straight from this fight scene with clayface like there are some moments that are like i i saw spider-man getting hit instead of batman oh no shit i haven't seen scenes. spider-man 3 in a long time how dare you i know you don't have a yearly ritual of watching peter parker strut down the street you know i i can't say that i have uh oddly enough when that movie came out it was the summer of 2007 so i i had been in a car accident and i was like doped my eyeballs on vicodin for a few months mm-hmm. and even on vicodin i really couldn't enjoy that movie so <laughs> maybe i'll go back and check it out again i feel like it's one of those that's probably not as bad as you remember but also no still no not it's worse good. is it worse it's so much worse than you remember <laughs> oh but that's what's great we oh. always have this talk about bad good movies <laughs> versus good bad movies yeah and it, this is definitely like one of the peaks of bad good of yeah bad oh, good movies god that's I, that, or sorry other way around it's one of the peaks of good bad movies wait so it's it's enjoyable but it's terrible yeah okay that is way better than having something being horrible but trying too hard yeah but i mean at least we got clayface yeah which yeah. is which is pretty good um mm-hmm. my story beat notes for this are massive because there is so much exposition oh yeah in the beginning of it and for the sake of laziness and tradition cameron what happens with all this exposition oh so much <laughs> uh so let's see it opens up with the lucius fox meeting bruce in a dark alley so we yeah. assume bruce mm-hmm. carrying a briefcase that has all the evidence to the very adult plot and i don't it think it really is like even now i don't really understand it i have a lot of question marks in my notes yeah, yeah so i'm sure children watching this show also don't understand it so basically it's evidence to incarcerate not a not an employee no uh, a rival a rival company for insider trading roland um, daggett which is also if you didn't know the name of the uh beaver from angry beavers i thought that was very fun oh my god you're right yeah but what, what was the other one it was norbert Norbert, oh my, I haven't watched that in years. Love Angry Beavers. Uh, I got to go back to that. So Lucius meets with Bruce. Bruce is asking for these papers against Daggett, and he's acting very strange, and he kind of gets in this fight with Lucius. He runs away, gets hit by a falling sign. Yeah, the, the henchmen that are, are stashed in this warehouse, because they're, they're trying to kill Lucius. Yeah. They are horrible shots. There's a lot of this episode where people just hold guns and wait for someone to leave a room before they fire. Yeah, because, like, so you would think these guys would have, like, some skill set. Let's even assume they're they're crappy shots. So they can't shoot at him, Lucius, being a big guy, mm-hmm. as he's running. Um, but thankfully, they can shoot, like, a hanging sign, like the cable off of a hanging sign, so it yeah. falls on him. It, it works out great. Yeah. There's some stormtrooper mentality there when it comes to their mm-hmm. marksmanship. And then some daredevil mentality pops in because Batman across town hears these gunshots happening. Oh, yeah. As he does, flies over, and we see that weird moment where Bruce runs away as Batman enters. Mm-hmm. And like, what's going on? Obviously, yeah. now we know. But for new viewers, it's, I'm sure that was a, a strange moment. A little bizarre. Uh, I, I do have to give Batman some credit, though, because we, we've called him out in the past for just like bumbling into a situation when he could use finesse. And mm-hmm. he does swing in and kick the guys, but he, at least he basically takes them all out, if only temporarily. Oh, yeah. This, the beginning of the fight scene felt very much like an Arkham game, when he, especially when he descends upside down yeah. in the shadows. Like That was just a great moment. Yeah. And yeah, he knocks all three out. Then they have this fight scene. We have another trope that is growing in this show. Oh, yeah. We have our trains, and now we have our giant gear (laughs) PSAs. 
Just giant gears. Uh, don't fight on giant gears, kids. Uh, yeah, I mean, admittedly, we are in a tramway, so I, we it's fair to assume there would be giant gears in the place. Yeah. But giant exposed gears. Obviously. A little bit less so. Mm-hmm. Right next to the handle that turns them on. I love when cartoons use that trope. Especially, my favorite one is always when Jackie Chan Adventures does it. Because oh. they do it at least three times a season. Oh, the giant gears. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, again, that's one that I've never gone back to. Do you remember the chant? Oh, the chant? Yeah, from Jackie Chan Adventures, the grandpa's chant. Like, oh, the you know Fight Eats Out? Thank you. I couldn't remember yeah. it. I'm like, I know Cameron will remember Of course. <laughs> Jackie Chan's amazing. It um, is. So, Giant Gears. I actually wrote down Jackie Chan Adventures. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, very sloppy fighting from Batman's side. But oh, really? We're, we're used to that at this point. And so, he knocks the three out. The police come. Uh, Batman leaves. And then we jump to the... Oh, uh, but when the police come, Lucius tells them that it was Bruce. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. now that he's a suspect. Yeah, Bruce is a suspect in mm-hmm. this um, insider trading business. Yeah. Uh, and for, you know, hurting an employee. Yeah, being a dick. Uh, so we jump to this fake Warner Brothers lot. Yep, Imperial Pictures. Thank you, I forgot yeah. to write it down. Even has the water tower in the background. Yeah, that's why I said WB lot. And we meet uh, Hagen for the first time, and we learn that he's been in a car accident and has this horribly disfigured face but thanks to daggett's special face cream he's mm-hmm. able to kind of turn his face into putty yeah. and morph it into whatever he wants but Again. he's used it so much that he's become addicted to this yeah and the, it's all it's all out so he has a um, like a stand-in slash assistant mm-hmm. named teddy who basically like had like kept a little bit in reserve for when he ran out and so now they're they're absolutely out and uh yeah the the exposition continues here as we learn all the backstory about hagen yeah hagen is a was a bad actor, not a bad actor, was a failing actor, got in the accident, and then after that he had his big spree of all these great movies. Let's see. Um, yeah, oh, and like the yeah the, the cream, I think, lasts for like 24 hours. Yeah. And then it wears off, and then he goes back to being all ugly again. And it supposedly has like a horrible pain when you when you transform back, as he mentions a couple. He never, like, you never oh. see him in pain, but he mentions it a couple times. Okay, see, a detail I completely missed. Yeah, there's that, and then that he's become addicted to using it. This, okay. is, this whole episode, for the people who who can't see the very obvious message, is a huge, like, dealing with addiction theme. Oh, yeah. Through the whole show. Yeah, so then, uh, what do I have here? Okay, yeah, so we know he's addicted, he knows he's running out, and the only place he can get it is from Daggett. So, we then jump over to Daggett at his own company, and they're kind of in the chemical manufacturing plant or whatever where all the stuff's getting processed right one of many chemical manufacturing plants of gotham maybe by the, maybe at the end of the whole run they'll have gone through all of them all of them will burn down maybe well i mean by that point they can just start building new ones that's true alfred's rebuilding them as we speak right yeah so uh they're they're out there they're at the facility yeah we get a little bit more backstory on hagen still with the whole accident um that he can change the way he looks that he needs a supply and that they know he's going to come back mm-hmm. um and for the listeners, you can hear a uh, a class going on in the background. Sounds like they're having a good time. Yeah, I think it's Monica's class. Is it actually? I can't tell. She walked by earlier. I was like, oh, hey. You guys don't okay. know who this person is, but Monica's awesome. So, yeah. but anyways, um, um, yeah. So they Daggett and his goons know they're gonna have to come back. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. That um, that Hagen is ha- is gonna have to come back to yeah. get more supply. Yeah, and so sure as shit, it fast forwards to the evening, and Hagen's there breaking in. So he breaks in, puts the putty on his face. The two... The henchmen. Yeah, the two Which, henchmen, who are great henchmen, by the they way. They are, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about this before, that they always go to an effort to give, like, one distinctive personality trait to all the henchmen. And so it's I just have them referred to as germs and headphones. Like, yeah. Like, the one guy... Well, one of his name... The one is named germs. Is germs, yeah. Like, he's, you know, he's... Uh, the other is Bell. Is I don't that, remember that his name. A, is that an agoraphobe? What is it know, when you like don't... germaphobe? Germaphobe, yeah. I don't know. That was agoraphobe, yeah. Anyways. Uh, afraid of blood? Uh, I don't, I don't know. know. Gory movies? I don't know. I don't know. I have an internet and internet so i'm gonna um, look it up it's also funny that that's like a trait that used to be a thing because nowadays like everyone is wearing headphones all the time yeah but back- it's, it's great to think that yeah back <laughs> then like that was a weird trait it's like yeah oh, yeah he's always listening to something and it's always tuned to the police radio ban so, oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh i think agoraphobes are people who don't want to go outside i don't know that sounds right fear of open spaces pantax anyways okay that aside <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Hagen breaks in. He's caught by germs and headphones. And to kind of get back at him for not finishing the job of getting the evidence. Oh, um, yeah. They just pour a whole vat of the cream onto his 
it looked like just his face, but I guess it was his, it was his whole body. Yeah, I think were they trying to drown like, him in it? Oh yeah, that, uh, yeah, it looked like he was like drinking it. Yeah, and it was it was kind of a weird weird little moment. But yeah, they're just, they're just yeah. pouring the stuff into him until he gets all messed up, <clears throat> and they take his body out and they like they shove it into his car. Mm-hmm. And as they're walking away, we see that Hagen's starting to like melt. Yeah, and drip a little bit. And then we're we're at the Bat Cave, and Batman's using. Like old school face imaging to try and yeah, like, it looked like he was just face. like making a character for an MMO. Yeah, it it reminded me of there's a scene in um, For Your Eyes Only, the James Bond movie, where it's the same thing too, where they go through and like they pick out all the different features until you get like the look. But I, I love his logic was my fist has landed on that jaw before. And he's yeah. trying to figure out who it is, and so he's going through and he figures out that the guy who he fought, I'm assuming this was back at the uh, the tramway in the beginning, mm-hmm. was Raymond Bell headphones, yeah. and that. You know, once again, we learn he's always listening to police band radio. Um, and then Alfred reminds him, like, oh, yeah, by the way, the cops were here earlier. What should I tell them? And Batman's just like, huh? Yeah. So then he the gets, cops? Yeah. So he gets Me? the newspaper that says um, Bruce Wayne is wanted for the assault of an employee. Uh, and he just kind of like, eh, that'll, that'll solve itself later. Yeah. I have more important things to take care of. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is stupid rich, so it will solve itself. Yeah, always. So we jump to outside a bar. This might be like the darkest moment Bruce or Batman has had in the show so far. Oh, yeah. This is like straight up torture is it's what he's doing. It's pretty extreme what he ends up doing. It. Yeah. Um, when it all could have been averted so easily. But uh, so we were in front of the bar. Uh, headphone tears over the radio that the police are looking for him. He gets in his car and runs off and the camera pans up. And we see that Batman is has tapped into the radio and is speaking for the person he's following Bell through the city in this yeah. in this interesting car sh- chase. Well, he's in the Batwing. Yeah, sorry, car slash Batwing chase. Yeah, and it ends with the Batwing spearing the car. Yeah, so Bell is trapped between the two like. But uh, yeah, well, I, I don't like, know the front wing prongs. I yeah. mean, there's probably a better name for than that. But in this is essence. Yeah, the, the, the prongs. They're of prongs. The Batwing. Yeah. Uh, and then from the prongs, like a little hand latch, like yeah. almost like a handcuff comes out and grabs Bell as the car falls into the ocean. Yes. Yeah, so he's the, just into he's, the dock. He's trapped in this claw dangling from the front of the bat wing and Batman's just flying like an asshole. Yeah. Trying to scare him. What I was thinking was, depending on how fast the bat wing was going, I assume it's going pretty fast. And he hits the water like the drag force that would like rip his arm off oh yeah well i mean just like the motions alone like the guy's basically being held on by his wrist like at mm-hmm. a minimum his wrist would break in like a horribly severe fashion yeah he holds out for a while flying around basically interrogating him yeah. trying to until he just straight up passes out yeah from the pain i forget from what, the the fear what is batman actually trying to figure out here because i have all the notes about what he does but i forget what questions he's asking him is he trying to figure out who he works for is he trying to figure out he was trying to figure out what or how were they trying to figure out how they were well first he was Bruce? trying to figure out who who was lucius meeting in that creepy alley and he okay, says yeah. bruce and he's like you're lying it, it can't oh be Bruce Wayne. that's right and before he can get that information he faints yeah he says who was it actually yeah and headphones faints and then the mm-hmm. police show up and their helicopters be like uh hey batman can, can you, you not <laughs> can, you, can you can you let him go please yeah can you not kill our suspects please yeah so the Batman just drops him into a rooftop pool. A couple stories fall. It's still a pretty big fall, yeah. yeah. And he's it's not that big of a pool, so he's got, good aim. He's got really, him. really good yeah. aim. Yeah, he must be great at those like claw machine games. I mean, this is yet another instance of like a henchman falling into like a body of water or a tree to save him. Well, this one was on purpose. This one's like, deliberate, though. Yeah, this it. that is the difference, though. Is yeah, it wasn't. It didn't just happen to be there. He like aimed for it. Mm-hmm. Um, Batman's now no closer to figuring out really where not where, who the guy was who was impersonating him. Mm -hmm. And the one lead is passed out now in police custody. Yeah. So there's only one person to go to now, which is Lucius. So he breaks into the hospital as Bruce, though. Right. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, just through the window, casually. I guess it kind of makes sense because he is, Bruce is wanted, and Lucius knows Bruce. He, I think Bruce still believes that, like, the impersonator obviously couldn't have been him, and Lucius must have been seeing something. Like, there's no way that Lucius believes that it was Bruce that he saw in there. Alfred brings it up in the next episode. They've known each other for years. Like, I think like 10 years they've been working yeah. together. Yeah. So it, it's so when then Bruce goes in to talk to Lucius, 
Lucius freaks because mm-hmm. he really believes that Bruce attacked him. So yeah. like he calls a panic button. You can see like Bruce is actually really hurt by that. It's like, you know, this person who he, he trusts who. Yeah. He, there are very few people that he trusts. Yeah. One of his few, I'd say friends. Yeah. You know, thinks he's capable of this sort of thing. So he's, he's kind of upset about it. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, we, we, in a previous episode, we talked about kind of the, the relationships of, of Bruce and Gothamites. Mm-hmm. Uh, we said Harvey was the friend of Bruce, and I think that was the like. Mm, yeah. if, we, if we're if we're dissecting Bruce and Batman uh, and their kind of world, social mm-hmm. worlds, Harvey represented his social life. Yeah. Whereas Lucius, I think, represents his, oh, okay. represents all of like Wayne Tech, the, you know, the side that we never see. Yeah, the side. Yeah, the, the side he, that doesn't really he, exist. He claims to have you know a, a strong association with they fight for, and he's like never there. Right. But that's like his Bruce's connection. Like those are the two pillars of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. The social and business. Yeah, and so that it all that's all kind of going going to shit, and he ends up getting arrested when he's at the hospital, and then we go from there to uh, Teddy. So Hagen's friend, assistant, standard or whatever, who goes and finds Hagen in the car. And he's, Hagen's completely mutated now into Clayface. Mm-hmm. And that's that where... We, that we just see in silhouette. We don't oh, okay, yeah, I don't think we actually yet. see the detail, yeah. yeah. And then um, that's where really part one ends. Mm-hmm. So much exposition. I, I mean, but that's, that's kind of typical of a lot of these two parts. Remember we had this kind of the same comment with the Two-Face one as well, where they just had so much plot to set up. The first episode, not actually that much happens, but a lot Mm -hmm. happens so that by the time we get to the next one, they have a little bit more room to kind of breathe and have fun. Yes. I mean, I I guess we might as well just move on to part two, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you have any other notes. Well, I had one one little tidbit that I learned about this. Mm -hmm. Um, The reason I brought up that you see Silhouette only in Clayface is um, they had two separate animation studios working on each episode. Mm. And if you look at the silhouette of Clayface, because you only see it through the car door and it's kind of in the background. You don't really see it up close. They just made him like a blob. Like they had no character design for him. Because I think Clayface is one of the greatest designed Batman villains of the show. The new animation company, uh, I think ATN, I think it was, I don't remember, ATN or ATX, Mm -hmm. they kind of had a hand in creating this character and giving him the fluidity Oh, cool. That he has. And like the next episode has some of the best animation, in my opinion. It has great in, animation. In the entire series. Yeah. Like, you know, because we, you mentioned before, and at, at, since you mentioned it, I've been watching for it, like moments in the episodes that could only be done in animation, mm-hmm. like that really are, are kind of big and crazy, you couldn't do in live action. So I feel like in part one, that would definitely be the, the Batwing right. chase. I mean, that he flies in the tunnel, skewers them, and flies them over the place. Like that, you absolutely couldn't do. And in the next one, it's absolutely clayface's movements yeah that <clears throat> yeah there was the technology was nowhere near capable of doing this way back in the early 90s well i say that but i mean like terminator 2 really holds up kind of different though mm-hmm. um and that's james cameron and, does, this, and that's true that's james cameron crazy stuff yeah I, people still haven't topped that which is incredible mm-hmm. but yeah you're right the, in the next episode like it does look absolutely amazing mm-hmm yeah so then like the next one picks up kind of where the last one left off right. and it's all a bunch of black and white shots as bruce getting processed through the gcpd he gets released it doesn't explicitly say why he gets released i think we can assume money he just posted bail yeah because he's rich so he can just do that my note here is justice system at work and yeah yeah, so he hops in the car with alfred and as alfred's driving away bruce changes in the back yeah batman he's like i'm gonna go solve this shit Mm -hmm. off he goes Oh, yeah, and so then... We jump to Clayface. Yes, we're back at uh, Imperial Pictures, whatever. Yeah, back in his trailer, yeah. where Clayface is now the typical Clayface that we see. He's no longer... the He never he no longer looks like Hagen. He now yeah. is the blob that we know. Big blob, monstrous, huge teeth, yellow eyes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, who has a very important message to all the young, impressionable young boys and girls, mm-hmm. saying, uh, if you're ugly, then you have no future. Is he not uh, wrong? Is he... I mean, living out in L.A., it, it <laughs> makes a little more sense. It feels that way sometimes. Yeah, so he's like, he's done. He's like decided, I'm, I'm through. I'll never work mm-hmm. again. He's packing up. He's getting ready to leave. He's yeah. basically just dejected. Like, yeah. my, my life is over. And then we're over at Daggett. Well, well, first he looks at his poster. Oh, and right. And he starts to figure out all the powers that have come with this transformation subconsciously. Uh, he kind of turns himself into 
physically he turns himself into the character yeah subconsciously it's kind of like yeah snaps yeah so he quickly figures out that he has this power to if he can concentrate hard enough become anything that he wants right but it doesn't last very long he has to focus on it and he can't focus yeah because his assistant taps him on the shoulder it's like oh god but oh and then he goes yeah it's gone yeah so oh and we, we get a little bit of more even more backstory on him still because uh he was we had to get some flashbacks because he was in this car accident face all messed up and like daggett came to him was like hey do you want to be the first test subject <clears throat> right for this cream so that's i think what like three or four scenes now they're still filling in his backstory yeah um and then it's funny too because then we go to daggett and we get even more information on daggett's backstory and the reason that he so the reason he's doing all of this that he's trying to like take out lucius is he wants to take over wayne enterprises mm-hmm because if he can, he can get access to their direct marketing branch mm-hmm. to sell his miracle cream because no stores will carry it because it's obviously a horrible product. And it, yeah, like, a horribly addictive, has horrible side effects product. Yeah, mutates people. So to your point before, again, really adult shit where we now watching and understand what's going on. But as a kid, you'd be like, wait, what? You probably, you, honestly, you probably don't even care. Yeah. You're just like, just give us Clayface. Evil cream makes villains. <clears throat> yeah, he wants it for some reason. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, but now they realize that to make sure it all goes smoothly, they have to take out Lucius. Mm-hmm. They have to, like, finally do it. And Bell has been taken care of, so he sends Germ. Yep. Germs. 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 Yeah. Um, who is freaking out, because, you know, he's germophobic. Yeah, and he's and going to a, go hospital. to a hospital. Where, I guess, like, Bruce has been arrested already, but he's out. And I guess that means there's no more security at the door. Oh, no, of course not. Because Germs just straight up walks in, yeah. grabs a pillow, and is about to suffocate yeah, Lucius. I, I mean, you know, the, the prime suspect is back out on the street, so why would you still have security hanging around? Yeah, he wouldn't try the same thing twice. Yeah. That's silly. So yeah, he just walks in. Yeah, he's going to do the whole uh, pillow smother. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, of course, Batman busts in, throws a batarang to knock the pillow out of Germ's hand. Is that the most harmless thing that's ever been knocked out of someone's hand by a batarang? probably yeah yeah it's guns i totally get knives sure watch out for those pillows yeah couldn't he have just like walked over and grabbed it yeah because there's no way you can suffocate someone in the time it would take you to just walk over yeah just swoop in there and grab it out of his hands but hey flair for the dramatic as we've always said oh i i forgot i wrote this down uh clayface i think rivals batman and his flair for the dramatic well he is an actor and it's it's great because especially uh when we first meet him when he's looking for his cream he destroys his trailer. Oh, yeah. Like, everything. Mirrors, all of his other, like, makeup products, just gone. Yeah. He's like, I can never work in this town again. He's like, here's some more face cream. He's like, oh. Oh, okay. okay thanks, thank man. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Batman starts chasing Bell, going back to where we are. Uh, germs. Not germs. Sorry, yes. germs. Uh, and germs accidentally runs into the disease ward. It, 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 they, they kind of do these as quick as a shot to, like, look around and show us, like, files containing like germs and stuff like that and then at one point we see just a whole bunch of open blood samples so it's like it's a whole bunch of test tubes Mm -hmm. filled with blood there's no stoppers on the top of them no you don't need that it's just open blood samples yeah i understand why he's freaked out you don't know what's in there but uh i'd say this is actually probably one of the most clever ways batman interrogates someone right which is not dangling them he's not dang yeah if we went for like extreme craziness last time uh this is very much the opposite in terms of its its subtlety yeah but its impact basically germs huddled in a quarter and batman grabs some sort of jar puts on uh, a ledge crimson something i forget yeah he grabs i forget what the the label says but it's something bad and he, he puts it on the ledge above germs and mm-hmm. then if germs isn't saying what he wants to hear batman punches the wall and the jar like shakes a little bit like mm-hmm. he's gonna fall into his lap but ever so quickly germs gives up every bit of information yeah after like one one little knock just like one punch yeah he's like okay i'm done you yeah. can take it here's everything you want yeah uh bruce was actually hagen hagen has this face cream created by daggett that lets him transform himself into whoever he wants uh don't make me get sick exactly yeah just gives it all up um and then a, a security guard comes in and he's like oh hey i got this batman and so batman goes to walk away we see that the the jar that he was threatening germs with is actually just like a seawater sample yeah. But then I think what germs recognizes the guard recognizes the voice something like that as Hagen. Yeah. Cause then, uh, Batman turns around and the cool, I think this might be the coolest and also the most deserved moment of Batman getting knocked out 
Clayface or the guard turns into Clayface and projects his arm yeah. out and knocks out Batman. He pushes Batman against the wall, slams him. I guess he's not knocked out, but he's knocked down. Yeah, he's knocked down. And you're right. Like Batman's not expecting the security guard to right. be a transforming dude made out of clay. I I'm, put this in my notes, but this is the only villain I think Batman should actually have a tough time fighting. Like all the other villains, yeah. there's something stupid that gets in the way of him not being able to just beat them in two or three punches. Yeah. But Clayface is the first time where like his his combat skills aren't going to beat Clay, a man that he can just like punch through. Yeah, that's exactly it. Like mm-hmm. if if he can be like hardest rock when he needs to, can be complete putty. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he's on the defensive, can be anyone. Yeah, like this is actually a a serious physical challenge for Batman in a way we haven't seen. And so, um, yeah, the fight scenes here are much more plausible mm-hmm. than we've seen in other episodes. So Clayface grabs germs, heads up onto the roof. A fight ensues, mm-hmm. and that's when I think Hagen kind of really starts to figure out his powers. Yeah, he can project part of himself. He can transform his arms. He his go to is lobster claws for some reason. Hey, you know what? If you got him, use them. Yeah, he loves him some lobster claws, some uh, some like bladed hands. Yeah. Well, what this scene reminded me a lot of, uh, similar to the Sandman fight. I think his name was Plasmius from Teen Titans. Oh, that sounds familiar. Uh, it's like episode two or three as you see them fight this, the purple and green blob. I, I feel like that that fight, which obviously is 15 years later, yeah. takes a lot of inspiration from this fight because it's like trying out different fighting styles, gadgets, mm-hmm. and you kind of see that like you can't use conventional fighting methods against... Blob man. Yeah. Some people listen to this and don't actually watch the episodes. You should because then it makes sense what we're talking about. But like mm-hmm. this one especially, go watch it because it really... For, like, 90s animation, it holds up really, really yeah. well. Like, it, it is beautifully animated. Mm-hmm. Um, again, couldn't be live action. Well, they tried with Sandman. Yeah. Was, okay. And I think, yeah, again, I haven't watched it in a while. How, do the effects hold up? Uh, I honestly haven't seen it. In, oh, okay. Uh, enough time to, to say so. I thought you watched it annually. I wish I did. Just the strut scene. Oh. Just, oh. The, the best scene of any... God, the Superhero evil, evil Spider-Man stress. Oh. Um, so as Clayface is attacking Batman, we also discover that if he changes constantly, it weakens him. Yeah. So he does have an Achilles heel. But when he starts to realize that he's getting weakened, he just jumps off the building, splats onto the ground, survives. Well, this is a moment which I think is amazing because it cuts back to Batman for a very specific mm. reason. So yeah. Hagen jumps off the building. Batman freaks out. Uh, shoots his grappling hook to try and catch him and then it cuts straight through Clayface yep. puts himself together and then he just splats on the ground and then it jumps to a very quick jump to Batman's face where he thinks that like he's he just, dead yeah he thinks he just killed someone yeah and that's like his what obviously his one rule in this version in, <laughs> in this animated not live action not Ben Affleck version exactly uh and he's freaking out, and then obviously Clayface just kind of pops back up and slides across the the street. And uh, yeah, he kind of gives the uh, children's animated version of like "fuck you," fucking yeah. off Batman as he slips into the sewer. My question is, did he know he could do that? It's a good question. Yeah, um, because he like pulls part of his side off when he's fighting. Like, yeah, when did he figure that out? I don't. Maybe he got really depressed earlier and. Tried jumping. I guess. I, you know, he probably didn't. That, that was just well, him. With like, his flair for the dramatic, he probably did. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He, he just assumed there was a stunt team down there waiting for him to land a giant airbag. Yeah. He's his own airbag. Uh, so he escapes into the sewer. He gets back to the studio or his apartment or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I just have uh, Hagen attacks Teddy. I don't remember what happens in that scene. I think it's some just, domestic abuse. Exactly. And then I just have Batman figures it out is my next note. So he's in the cave. Do you? Do you remember what uh, where so Batman I, finally puts all the pieces together? Uh, I wrote Clayface beats up Butler slash Standin. <laughs> uh, so Teddy wanted to just up and leave Gotham. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, I can't. You know, I have to I have to finish what I started. He wants to kill Daggett. And Batman, I said, Batman gets face cream. Does he he breaks oh. into Daggett's office? He yeah, he gets a simp. I do, <laughs> I legitimately don't know what actually happens in that scene. Because normally I write the location and then what happens, and yeah. literally my only note is just yeah, so Batman yeah, he, figures it out. Uh, it's it's a super fast, like maybe fifteen second scene yeah. where it shows Daggett or not Daggett. It shows Hagen with Teddy, 
and then it just does a super quick jump to Batman in Daggett's office, and he takes a sample, and then it jumps straight to the interview. Yeah, that's right, because Daggett's on some talk show, mm-hmm. some like kind of like a Tonight Show equivalent, but instead of it being a celebrity, it's a, a businessman. Yeah, he's going there to talk about his new. Uh, amazing face cream so yeah so he goes on there he's talking about how incredible this thing is and they show a sample of like a woman who's like kind of an older woman old wrinkly puts a song and you know she looks incredibly young and then uh of course all the women in the audience freak out and get all excited about it because mm-hmm. this is the 90s um plastic surgery is new at this point yeah we we do get a, an amazing moment where batman breaks in the building in disguise oh man this is like tops all of Bruce's other disguises. Yeah. Because obviously he has a hobo disguise. Mm-hmm. He has a gangster disguise. Yeah. There's no way he could get a janitor's costume. Right. So he's in the bat suit dressed up as a janitor. Yeah. He's got like got like the hat and overalls on over the bat suit. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so it's amazing. It's so good. Yeah. Pushing like a, you know, like the, like the cleaning cart. cart. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he goes into the control room and he starts putting tapes <clears throat> into the control room. We don't. We don't know what he's doing quite yet, mm-hmm. um, but he's up to something. Uh, so then we're back in the the interview, and uh, a woman in the audience starts berating Daggett. And it's like, oh, you know, the reason that you're having to sell it to us directly is because no stars will carry it because it's dangerous and addictive and it messes you up. And she's getting more and more belligerent, and we kind of figure out, okay, clearly there's more going on here. And, of course, it's Hagen who's you know disguised himself. Um, so then he reveals himself and attacks uh, Batman literally swings in and he's learned and he instead of trying to kick through him, he like hip checks. So it's a wider yeah. area of, of impact. He did learn a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I did have one one note here, too. It must be when he used the grapple. What I find it so funny is so he always launches the grapple and it has a claw on the end of it. That's clearly designed to hook into things and mm-hmm. onto things. It never actually hooks into anything. It was just like wraps around. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Maybe he has like a button. That'll that'll make it like open and close. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I just I I finally realized that this episode. Like, why does it never actually just grapple? I don't know. I, don't I, know. I think he probably has like a lot of lasso training. <laughs> and he knows like when he shoots it, he'll like move it in a circular <laughs> motion. For when his travels across the world, he spent a lot of time out in like the south <clears throat> the southwest, just yeah. it's a cattle rustler. You never know when those things will come in handy. Yeah. Hey, they did come in handy though, right? I mean he knows how to hog tie crocodiles. Yeah, that's very important yeah. in Gotham. Because there's a lot of crocodiles in Gotham. That all follow the Sewer King. Yeah. So another great fight scene. And this is the part that, that I think Raimi took some inspiration for Sandman. Mm-hmm. We see Clayface shoot his arm out again and kind of pin Batman on the wall. And he disconnects his arm. Yeah. So it's just holding Batman there. Right. Um, Sandman, I'm, I'm pretty sure, did the exact same move. When he remember. like in the sewer, they're fighting in the sewer, and Batman or the Sandman shoots his arm mm-hmm. and Spider Man on the wall. Yeah, because they're fighting in the in the trains. Oh my! Oh guess. my! Oh my God! Okay, yeah. Um, we now know 100. percent Sam Raimi watched a lot of Batman animated yeah. series. I guess it's the subway, not the train. It's still a train. Yeah, yeah. What's happening? Uh, so there's the fight scene. He, okay, he yeah. moves the fight scene through the entire studio, mm-hmm. and they end up in that control room that yeah. we saw previously yeah he's basically taking batman's basically taking punches to mm-hmm. lure hagen into the control room he turns on all the screens and it's all of hagen's previous films hagen doesn't really know what's going on and batman learned previously that hagen kind of transforms subconsciously yeah so he's got pictures up yeah basically just headshots of hagen and all of his different roles so there's like he's like a like a buccaneer and like a cowboy and like a like a gentleman spy and all of these different things and mm-hmm. so yeah, Hagen's just getting confused and it's constantly changing from one to the next and it's weakening him and it's confusing him. But in this moment, Batman's still trying to help him though. Yeah. You know, he's basically like, let me, let me help you. Like, come in with me. We'll find you a cure. We'll get you back to the way you used to be. But of course, it is a Batman villain. So he refuses mm-hmm. and uh, smashes the control room. Well, well, first the police bust in. Oh, that's right. Very oh, convenient yes. Time. Very conveniently. Uh, as Hagen's transforming through all of his former selves, he also transforms into Bruce. Yeah. Oh my God. That looks just second. like Bruce Wayne. Yes. Yep. Just so you can, you know, put a bow on that and call yeah. it a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> Hagen starts smashing all the computers and Which then he blow up. Yeah. They blow obviously. Yeah. And he's hit by a bolt of electricity. He goes down. I didn't realize that that was supposed to mean that he died. Yeah, I just thought he got incapacitated. Right. 
so it's a little bizarre, but he, I guess what's supposed to tip us off is he, he makes a comment like, oh, I know, I wish I had a death scene like this in one of my movies. Yeah. Again, I just assumed he was knocked out. Right. I thought it was just his continued flair for the overdramatic, which yeah. it is. It is. Yeah. He's ever the actor. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, of course, we get like the newsreel that oh, all charges have been dropped against Bruce Wayne and Daggett's been arrested. Mm-hmm. So then Batman's in the cave testing out a sample right. of Clayface. Yeah, he, he got a sample and he's sparking it with electricity and it's just kind of transforming into cool stuff. I don't think they ever really like go magic that. sand. Just yeah. Boom. And he, uh, he tells Alfred like, oh, the sand doesn't get affected by electricity. I feel like Hagen might just be a shell. Yeah. And then, of course, it jumps to the funeral home or the, the, the morgue, the morgue. Thank you. Uh, and as the morticianer pulls down the, the sheet sheet. Thank you. Um. Uh, you see a, you see Clayface just kind of crumble into dust. And then outside, you see Teddy leaving. And then just the very convenient brunette standing there starts cackling mm-hmm. evilly. Eyes so, turn yellow. Yeah. yeah, so obviously that was Clayface. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of fun. Like, it, it you know, he, he faked his death and, and got away. Mm-hmm. One, like, one thing that I thought was interesting, is, so Batman's experimenting this chunk of clay, right? I think we can assume then... If Clayface can break off pieces of himself to go, you know, like he left a piece of himself behind to basically fake his own death, that sort of implies that every piece of him has sentience, right? Yeah, well, there's the upcoming episode with Clayface where we see that, one of the, like, the yeah. really sad episodes. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a, a lot of the good Clayface episodes, They're just stories in general incorporate that. So what that means, though, is that Batman is standing in the Batcave next to Alfred talking to a oh. sentient piece of clay. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, they obviously they just skip over that, but like that that one little tiny chunk, although it doesn't have a lot of mass, theoretically is aware of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't think I'm trying to remember how it works, Clayface. I feel like he he only can re- regain the consciousness once it reemerges, right? right? So it's not like he off wherever he is is aware of what's happening with that little, tiny little piece. But if that piece ever got back to him. Mm-hmm. He would know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's typical clone mentality. I think so. Yeah, because you know all that real stuff with clones oh, and stuff. Yeah, all, all the real science of yeah. clones. Yeah. So I like in terms of like trivia for the episode, I don't have too much. Um, cool voice cast though. I was looking it up. Mm-hmm. So uh, Dad gets played by Ed Asner. Yeah, you know Ed Asner, right? I yes. He is. Papa Elf in yes. Elf. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I mean, he's been in, in tons of shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's been on Big Bang Theory. I've actually met him. Really, really nice guy. Oh. Um, and then Ron Perlman is, is Clayface. Clayface. Oh. Absolutely perfect. I mean, a master of disguise, playing a master of disguise. And then I just love that it's Ed Begley Jr. playing Germs. Mm-hmm. Do you know Ed Begley Jr.? Uh, the, he, no. Okay. You were doing so well in this round of Cameron. Do you know this random celebrity? Most of them from the 90s. Usually uh, I do really you, you well actually, this game. You, yeah, you actually do pretty well with this game. He, um... Uh, okay, Arrested Development. The guy with no hair. Yeah. Uh, the the youngest... No, like, no, no. the, um... He's, like, the other... There's he's, like, the, ri- he's the rival hair. for George Sr. Um, okay. He was also the dad in The Page Master. This is just gonna make all our viewers realize that I didn't watch Arrested Development. Oh, wait, you haven't watched Arrested Development here. Here's a photo. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I've shown Cameron a photo of Ed Begley Jr., he uh, also voices a character in another episode that's coming up soon. Okay. Which is clear they just had him in the studio and they had him stick around. Yeah. But yeah, we kind of already talked about that this version of Clayface is a bit of a matchup. Um, there's really not much to say about Daggett other than he was created for the show and then was used in The Dark Knight Rises, trying to basically do the exact same thing, take over Wayne Enterprises, then played by good old Ben Mendelsohn. But yeah, I mean, that's those are kind of most of the notes I have for for Clayface. Yeah, it's... um. The whole plot of these two episodes is um, was pretty much stolen for the plot of the the Catwoman movie. That oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's you've mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's all about um, Selena worked for kind of the cosmetic company. Mm-hmm. Found out some horrible secret about it. Boss killed her. She came back to life for some reason. Was she bit by cats until she came back to life. I think so. Something. She, you see her like fall down a pit, and then she's surrounded by a bunch of cats. And okay, so they, they, they really just stole the exact same origin. Yeah, from um, from Returns. Okay. Yeah. Um, and like the the only difference is in Catwoman. From what I remember, it's been a couple of years. Like the boss has been using the makeup for so long that she has like diamond skin. Like, oh, it's unpierceable yeah. skin. Oh my god. Oh, it's oh god. Would that have been before? 
Emma Frost's secondary mutation came out in the X Men comics where uh, she can turn her skin to diamond. Catwoman was two thousand three. Okay, so I don't know. When um, that that, that was part of the Grant Morrison new X Men run, which may have been around around the same time actually. I don't remember, but yeah, like I, you know, in terms of Clayface, I was trying to think of like really good comic arcs that have him. I mean, obviously, we get some really great episodes mm-hmm. later on in the series. I think one of the problems with Clayface is usually when he's an integral part of the plot, it's usually a plot twist that a character that you weren't expecting to be Clayface actually is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the service of not giving away spoilers, there are great comics out there, but to say which ones he's in, give away the fact that that's part of the plot. Well, there's also um, Arkham City. Yeah. He's a pretty big component in that game. Yeah, those games are good. I think, is the new, the updated version out now? I think it is. The remastered? I don't know. My focus has solely been on Pokemon that comes out tomorrow. Oh, my God. So I'm not going to see you for, like, weeks now. No, you'll see me. I'll just have a Game Boy in my hand. <laughs> okay, I won't judge you for it. I just it. won't look up. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, there are there are great comics out there with Clayface. I'm not going to say which ones, just in case you haven't read them. Mm-hmm. You don't want to give away. So just read all of, all of the Batman comics. Just read all of the Batman comics. Yeah. And when you find Clayface, yeah. you'll know which ones we're talking exactly. about. Exactly, yeah. Chances are the comics that he's good in are ones we've talked about before, because mm-hmm. they're the ones that I've read that are really good. But I think that basically covers it. Any more notes on... Uh, face? No, I mentioned it before. It's a it's a great episode to subtly teach kids about addiction. It's true, subtly too, which is better than their normal ham fisted approach to these sort of things. Yeah, because this was kind of right when the big push of anti tobacco uh, anti tobacco started to come in to the public eye. No, it's pretty solid. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess from there we move then on to our segment of bat plug. Bat plug. What All what right. do you got for us this week, Cameron? Well, last week we talked about. Um, I, like we've talked about the past few weeks now. Um, oh, Black Mirror? Black Mirror. I watched the episode <laughs> that, that Johnny plugged last week. It was, uh-huh. actually, it was actually a pretty good episode. It was good? Okay. Yeah. I do recommend that episode. You didn't I, hate I'm yourself after watch watching it? No. I didn't. I didn't. I felt, I felt miserable, but it was a great episode. It was a great idea. Uh, but the, one, the thing that I want to plug more than anything, because mm-hmm. I, I texted you about it when I left the theater, I watched Arrival. Oh, that's right. And yeah. It, oh, man. It... It was such a wonderful movie experience. I haven't, I like, I think I said this to you. I haven't had that pleasurable of a movie experience since The Prestige. I don't. Think. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. I gotta go see it. Um, and I, I, I can't say anything about it because, like, the only thing I want to talk about is the twist. And okay. It's, it's. Yeah. Oh man. I'll, I'll go watch it, then we can sit and talk about the twist because I, yeah. I really do need to see it. It, it was one that had I didn't really was. I didn't have much interest in it, but just been getting such great reviews. I'm like, okay, I gotta go right. see it. Yeah, I only went because it just had great reviews. It was, it's a great, great film. Okay, yeah, I definitely gotta go check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, let's what see. What do you have to plug? Uh, I mean, it's it's an old it's an old plug. Not that I would that I've done before, but just, it's an older property. But mm-hmm. I've been catching up on Doctor Who actually. Like, okay. I, I did a serious binge on it earlier this year and burned like through everything up to the first season of Peter Capaldi, and then I stopped watching it for a while. I'm like, you know what? Actually, I should kind of get back into it so i've been watching that a little bit and it's fun the one problem i had with it is that i find that stephen moffat's writing can be weirdly choppy sometimes we're like some things i want to have on like future on my love because it's on the background and i can like be kind of like cooking do some other stuff and i can still watch and more or less pay attention right um i feel like i actually have to really pay attention with with doctor who but uh it's been fun going back to that so it's like batman it's all up on amazon prime so go check those out and uh, go, I guess, watch this one episode of Black Mirror. I mean, you don't have just to. One, you don't really have don't, to. Just yeah. don't watch Black Mirror. Just go guys. watch Arrival instead. Yeah. But yeah, I think that basically covers this week. So we'll be back next week with Joker's Favor and Vendetta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and until then, you can find us at Tim Talk Pod on all the social medias. Mm-hmm. You can find me at Cameron Dexter on everything. And I'm at Lordifer. And uh, thank you once again to Trevor Reese for coming in and being our audio engineer. Go check out his podcast, the podcast of two worlds, all about the flash. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye.